Dear colleagues, in this presentation, I want to display you the effect of multiple pumps for a hydraulic circuit. Pumps can be connected in parallel, in sequence, or in any combination of them. Moreover, they can be equal or different. We start here with two equal pumps in sequence, then we will see the two pumps in parallel together with some examples. Finally, we consider the most generic case of having different pumps in a combination of series and parallel, a very simple one. Let's start together. The reason why multiple pumps are used is for increasing the supply capacity of the system. To increase the flow, must be pumps in parallel. To increase the head, they must be in sequence. To increase both, we need a combination of above. In any case, the working point defined by H and Q is the intersection between the pump curve, the red one, and the load curve, the green one. Questions to be answered are how changes the flow, how changes the head, and how changes the power demand. Of course, when parallel operation, we are mostly interested in question number one. And when sequence operation, we are mostly interested in question number two. Let's start from the sequence operation. The equation of the centrifugal pump says the head as a quadratic function of the flow, being a descending parabola. This function depends upon two parameters, the static head H0, that is the head at zero flow, and the curve shape alpha. Those parameters are given. We will see later on that alpha can be experimentally found. Since the pumps are in sequence, they share the flow. Also, Q1 equals Q2 equals Q. On the other hand, the heads are added. So we sum the two pumps curves. If the pumps are equal, then the static heads H0 and the curve shape alpha are the same. We obtain the curve of the new pump system. The working point is the intersection of the network curve with the pump system curve already found. The network curve is still a quadratic function with the shape of an ascending parabola instead. That curve depends upon two parameters, the head at zero flow, HL0, and the curve shape K that describes how the curve is deep. The above parameters are also given. The intersection point among the two curves is found by equalizing the two equations. We get QS, the flow for the sequence, and HS, the head of the sequence, as displayed in green. When the pumps are in sequence, the corresponding heads are added, as we have seen. So the curve of the single pump, the blue one, becomes the one displayed in green. The curve of the load, the black one, does not change instead. The working point moves along the load curve to match the green one. Actually, both head and flow changes, but if the pumps are correctly chosen, H increases more than Q. The power of the new pumping system is given by the same formula used for the single pump by replacing the head HS and the flow QS found for the sequence operation, as seen in the previous slide. Normally, the power of the system is less than the sum of the power of the single pumps. This is not a rule, however. Let's see now what happens for the parallel operation. In this case, the head is in common and the flows are added. To add the flows, we need first to solve the pump equation for Q as displayed. Being two parallel pumps, then we write the same equation twice. If the pumps are equal, the subscripts becomes the same. Adding the flows means to duplicate them. Now we solve the equation for H back and we obtain the expression 
of the pump system. The working point, as seen for the sequence operation, is found by the intersection of the load curve with the new pump system curve. The expression of QP and HP, the flow and the head for the parallel, are displayed in red. That is the case of two equal pumps, as said. Should be n equal pumps, the expression of QP becomes the one at the very last row. Now we see how the parallel operation looks like. The flows are added. The working point is kept on the load curve and moves into the right to match the new system curve, the right one. If the pumps are correctly chosen, Q increases more than H. The power is given by the same formula for the single pump by using the new operation point HP and QP. Same as seen for the sequence, generally the power of the parallel is less than the sum of the powers of the single pumps. How to find the parameters alpha and k? Those define the shape of the pump curve and load curve respectively. k is called also dynamic load parameter. The parameters can be found experimentally by knowing one operating point q star and h star. Practically, we need to write the equation of the pump and solve it for alpha. And similarly, we write the equation of the load and we solve it for k. Alternatively, for the pump, we can write the expression of alpha if it is known the flow at zero head, q0. In such a case, alpha is h0 over q0 square. By using h0 and q0, the pump equation can be written as follows. Let's see now an example of the sequence operation. A network is fed by a centrifugal pump whose parameters are known. The parameters are q0, h0. On top is known the static head hl0, the head delivered by the pump h star, and its efficiency eta. Soon after, the static load changes. It duplicates from 15 to 30 meter, so that the pump head will be insufficient. We want to place a second equal pump in sequence. Question is, what is the new operating point and the corresponding energy demand? The situation is graphically illustrated in the chart aside. Let's find first the dynamic load parameter k. In order to get it, we need the operating point q star and h star. We remember that one operating point is given by two parameters. h star we have already, that is 18 meter. To find q star, we write the pump equation using the known parameters h0 and q0, and we solve it for q. We get 25.6 cubic meter per hour. The parameter k is found by using the expression seen at slide number 7. From h0 and q0, we determine the pump coefficient alpha, so that we can insert both alpha and k in the formula for sequence operation. We get qs 28.9 cubic meter per hour. Once qs is known, the head is also found. We get hs 33.8 meter. By replacing the new operating point into the power formula, assuming same efficiency, we get the power consumption of the system that turns into 3.87 kilowatt. For the parallel operation example, we keep the same network of the previous example when only one pump was operating. Let's resume hereby the findings of slide number 9. We assume now that the dynamic load parameter k drops to the health and we want to deliver more flow by adding a second equal pump in parallel. Questions are the same of previous problem under changed conditions. The new dynamic load parameter k prime is the health of k. Also, 
0.0023. The flow of the parallel we can find soon by using the formula seen at slide number 5. We get QP equals 42.8 cubic meter per hour. Similarly, as per the sequence operation, we get the head HP that turns into 19.2 meter. The energy demand is now 3.26 kilowatt. The last problem we want to display is the most generic case when the pump system is a combination of parallel and sequence operation. Moreover, when the pumps are not the same. We take here a simplified case with three pumps only. Of course, the procedure can be extended if more. Let's write the equation of each pump considering their parameters H0 and alpha being different. Moreover, we know that pumps P1 and P2 are in sequence and the sequence is parallel to pump P3. Because of that, the flows Q1 and Q2 are the same and the head of pump P3 is the sum of H1 and H2. Since H3 is the head of the system, we call this simply H. In the same way, we call Q the flow of the system, the sum of Q1 and Q3. Then we have the equation of the load. The pump's parameters H0i and alpha i are given for i changing from 1 to 3, as well as the load parameter k. We assume here no static load, also H L0 equals 0. We start the solving process by guessing H1. From the equation 1, we get Q1. From the equation 2, we find H2. From the equation 4, we calculate H. And from the equation 6, the flow Q of the system. The flow Q3 is given by the equation 5. The last equation, number 3, we use to confirm the flow Q3. If the two values do not match, we need to change the guess H1 till convergence. Of course, the procedure can be automatized by a software, for example, the Excel Goal Seek. Let's see now a numerical example of above. The network data are given, no static load, and K equals 0 0.0046. The pump's parameters are assumed in the table aside. We take as guess value H1 equals 12.5 meter. Consequently, as seen in the previous slide, we can calculate in a row the remaining unknowns. Q1, H2, H, Q, and Q3. At the very end, we verify the guess by calculating Q3 once again from the equation number 3. Since the new value is not deviating significantly, that is less than 0.5 cubic meter per hour, we say that the verification succeeded. The working point is for Q79 cubic meter per hour and for H28.6 meter. If we want to assess also the power consumption, we need to use the power equation for each pump at the corresponding working point QI HI and make the sum. Should be more pumps, a similar algorithm can be applied. We need always to guess one parameter, for example H1, and then verify the choice at the very end. Definitely, the solving complexity does not increase, since it only depends upon one unknown variable. I hope you have enjoyed my presentation. Please let me know your comments, and thank you for your attendance. See you next time. Bye-bye.